guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Ailey. If you're new to today's video, I actually wanted to just do a little video to talk about my experience with my back problems. So if you're somebody who's going to be going in to get the spinal denervation procedure or facet joint injections or anything like that, then this video will give you a little bit of insight from somebody who's had it done rather than just reading what you get to read from like the medical things online of what it's like, what it feels like, what the process is like, etc. Because going into it freaked the living daylights out of me. So I kind of want to share my experience. I'm not going to make it too long. Um, I'll kind of avoid my history almost completely I'll just tell you a tiny little bit and um, what it took to get to this point and then I'll go straight into what it was all like so obviously if you like this video please like it subscribe all that sort of stuff if you want to hear stuff like this um, and it just interests you then my blepharoplasty story will be up there for you um, it actually follows day to day and before and after my surgery and stuff like that if that's something that interests you so okay I have a back injury. Technically, it's not an injury like something happened, like I fell. It is a combination of my hypermobility and putting kind of excessive strain on my back, I would say. Um, I did a little bit of gymnastics and stuff like that when I was younger, and I did quite a heavy lifting job um, back when it kind of first started kicking off. And then it, I probably never really lifted correctly. And having the posture that I had, I have lordosis, which is when your, your bottom of your spine kind of concaves in like that. And yeah, so it was a whole big thing. And eventually I was referred to the pain clinic. I am in NHS Highland. So the pain clinic up in Galsby. And I was, there's a whole rigmarole to go through, but I'll kind of save that for now. But Obviously, I was taken in to get the steroid injections. So they are steroid injections essentially right into the joints that are causing the problem. And it's the way that you actually diagnose facet joint dysfunction, facet joint pain, whatever. Skip forward to obviously the first time that I went in. Now, I've had this done twice and then I moved on to the denervation. So this actually worked well. I what You go in, okay, this is how it works in Golfsby anyway. So you go up, you go in, and essentially they, depending on what time of day it is, you'll get like a private room or you'll be in just like the cubicle that you're gonna be in for the rest of the time that you're there. And you basically undress everything apart from your underwear. Your bra does have to come off, but your your pants or boxers, whatever, can stay on. And you put a gown on. So you know the, the funny gowns that tie at the back. So you put that on and you take... I mean, you don't really have to take off your jewellery. If there's anything that would be in the way, you can take it off. But I usually just leave it all on. And I usually take my watch off just because you're leaning on your hand, which I'll tell you about in a second. You then get your blood pressure checked. They go over your details and stuff like that. You have had a form to fill in, so they've got all that. You get a lovely little bracelet because you are technically an inpatient for the time that you're there. You are admitted to hospital. So when it it's time, you obviously... I always wear fluffy socks because it's just easier to walk down to theatre. I don't know if they call it theatre, but to walk down to the room that it's going to happen in. Then you meet the dude or the person who's going to do it and they ask you a couple of questions and then if it's your first time they'll actually check and maybe palpate on the um, sore joints so they'll tell you to you know tell them where it's sore sort of thing and I could always point straight to mine so he said yes that's what we've got here this is what we're going to do and I actually got two joints um, treated so it was I think it was L5 and L4 but I'll double check and I will be putting up graphics on the screen to explain what it is that I'm talking about because until you've seen it, it kind of doesn't make an awful lot of sense. So that's all fine. You go in next door and there's basically a table with a big x-ray machine. It's like a big C-shaped x-ray machine and it goes over the top of you. So you lie on your front on this bed and they open up the back of your gown. They basically wriggle your underwear down so that your butt crack is on show. Leave your shame at the door. <laughs> Everybody's friends here. The nurses, the nurses I always get are amazing, but they, there's one that is doing the x-ray machine she's like taking the, the stills 
there's one that stays with you and there's another one that's kind of does bits and bobs with the doctor the doctor then uh, or they then sanitize your entire back which is really cold <laughs> really cold spray and he gets to work so for this one essentially what it is is it's like a really long needle like if you've seen a needle that they use for epidurals same kind of idea so the needle goes in and then they um go right into the joint so in the joint they'll inject a dye and you can see it on the x-ray machine once they see that the dye is in the right place they then inject the it's a cortical steroid and uh what's it called an anesthetic so the anesthetic gives you relief you know kind of straight away because you, they're doing quite a lot of trauma you do four of them and then that's it done basically so i mean it takes about 15 minutes or so it really doesn't take long at all but essentially the sorest part is when the needle is being inserted he, he gives you a little bit of local anesthetic in your skin beforehand which is stingy um and then the needle kind of he, he pushes and then they click the x-ray machine he pushes they click he pushes they click and it just is them that they can see the needle going into your back that way it goes in and everything gets injected into your joint so when they're injecting it into the joint it hurts because obviously if you can imagine the joint space is then being filled up by something else so the pressure that you feel is what's sore but really it's actually not that bad once it's all done you go into recovery and you stay in recovery for an hour they give you tea they give you biscuits it's great and then you get up you get dressed you go home somebody has to stay with you for 24 hours you're not allowed to drive for 24 hours and bob's your uncle that's you done it can take a few days for it to kick in but that's it and then it depends how long it'll last so because it's in the joint it just does what it does I don't actually know how it wears off as such. I'm, I'm not 100% sure on how all that works, but mine used to last for about five months, which was fine. But on the NHS, you're waiting about 18 months to get your next one. So what I was finding was I was getting better and then going downhill again. And although like I could train and stuff like that, it was kind of tethering off towards the end. So I got it done twice, got it done the second time. The second time I got the same, probably maybe, I don't know, a couple of weeks less you can feel the pain coming back in. So when they reassessed again, obviously all this was after COVID and stuff like that, they actually asked um, if I was happy to go ahead with that one or if I wanted to try the other one. So I said I want to try the other one. The other one was the denervation procedure. So for this one, it's different. They have to take you in and get you to basically get a nerve block. And it, essentially what it is, is they just numb the nerve and it lasts like a day so I had to go all the way to Galsby which is like four hours away from me and get this done easy peasy it really wasn't actually I mean I used to go up the road feeling physically sick I used to just uh it was horrendous I was so so nervous when I went in for this one because I'd been so long I was nervous but I don't know I think I just I talked myself out of I kind of it's like it's fine you've done this before it might be a little bit different but I mean it, the needle's not going all the way into the joint so it can't be that bad so in this one obviously the needle just goes down to the nerve and it and it they inject the local anesthetic around the nerve and numb the nerve and it just lasts for like a day so you know it was actually really easy there was exactly the same procedure except instead of putting the needle into the joint they just put it down to the nerve but this time there was six so he treated three of my vertebrae i think it was l5 l4 and l3 but i'm gonna find out i have a letter with it on it i'll put it on the screen so that was all fine it worked i was pain free for the day the only weird reaction that i had was i had cramp down my right butt cheek and but apart from that like my pain was gone for a day it was weird because i had the pain from getting the the treatment done but my pain was gone so thumbs were up that was me ready to go seven weeks later which was actually just Thursday just passed time for to do the actual procedure so this is where it was different and this is where I wish that I could have found a video like this to explain what to expect so everything in the lead up identical all of it the same you're face down on the bed and this time they do one side at a time they did that with the the nerve block as well I should have said um, but it was much much quicker so essentially what they do is three needles are inserted 
the you get your local anesthetic before he starts putting the needles in as the needles are going in the nurses are always checking on you it hurts i'm not gonna lie it really it actually really does hurt but it's like sore stop sore stop sore stop and pretty much that's it it's totally bearable once the needle is in place what they then do is move on to the next needle and then move on to the next needle. So you've got three needles in one side of your spine. This may vary, this is just my experience. So you've got three needles in and the way that this one works is actually then they connect an electrode to the needle. I think it might go even go down the middle of the needle, um, you know, like through the hollow needle. Um, so they feed that through or whatever and they co it's connected to an electrode and you know that this is about to happen because they're always telling you what's happening and they move the x-ray machine away so once the needle is in the right place they move the x-ray away when the, he maybe start, does some minor adjustments because you can feel a little bit of like oh okay, that, that kind of hurts um, but then he says okay this is when we're going to do this we're going to start with the first one, which is usually the lowest one. And when you feel something change, let me know. Now, I didn't know what this meant. And I was panicking at this point. And I was like, fuck. What, what do you mean? Like, am I going to feel pain? Am I going to? So anyway, basically, if you've ever tried one of those machines that works your muscles for you, it tenses up your muscles. So it makes your muscle do that jolt. That's what it was. It was so weird. So essentially you feel it, you feel it a little bit more and then you feel it a little, like it's, when you think back, you can feel it all the time, but you don't realize until it gets to that tightness and you kind of nod and say, yes, I can feel it. And then it relaxes again. It's almost like they're activating the nerve which activates the muscles around it or something like that. But that's what it is. And it doesn't hurt at all. It feels weird, but it doesn't hurt. Then he says you're going to feel a tapping sensation so it's like it's it's doing it and stopping really quickly so it's like tense and stop tense stop tense stop and then it disappears it sort of fades out and then there's nothing so my thinking is the nerve is being activated when it's being burned essentially with the heat and because it tapers off that's the nerve being destroyed well not destroyed but severed you know so this doesn't hurt by the way that part does not hurt it's kind of like a tap 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 so you're like doop, 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 and then it just goes away for the first three I was like right okay and then he came back over and he put more local anesthetic in that stung like buggery it was like somebody putting something stingy stingy nettles or something like that on my back but he said obviously it's just so that it's not sore afterwards or it's not sore for a while afterwards because the residual pain will so it's kind of like taking painkillers so of course all the needles then come out I can't tell you how good that feels when he's got the little bit of whatever it is and he's rubbing your back and you're like there's no needle there anymore yes so then he moves over to the other side moves all the bits over and on my left side that's my worst side for some reason my lowest left so l5 on the left is the worst my worst one i think is it i used to think it was my right i think it's just like the the l5 is my worst but obviously this side was bad i have bruises he was putting in the first needle which was the lowest one and this was so incredibly painful like so painful i was moving it didn't seem to phase him though and he never told me off but I was like Ugh! like holy crap it was like a sharp pain but I could I, I can't really describe it it was just it was really unpleasant anyway once that was in I felt like I was kind of rolled up on one side like that almost trying to protect myself and I actually caught a pulled not a pulled muscle but like a muscle strain in my neck because of it anyway it was bearable and it was fine I was just like right okay you just have to get through this you have to get through it you have to get through it and I realized that you had to insert two more needles this was so fast because my brain was occupied with the first one I didn't realize he'd already put the second one in and then he was on the third one and I was like oh my god he's got one more to do but he hadn't he'd already done all three so once the three was done, again, they stepped away and I thought, well, the quicker that this part gets done, the quicker the nerve's gone and the quicker this stops hurting. So 
again, the electrical charge through it, the whole thing tensed up. Again, even though it was sore, that wasn't like, I thought, oh my God, this is going to be excruciating. It actually wasn't. It was the same sensation as the other side. So I was like, thank God for that. And then the tapping, tap, 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 gone. He then, because obviously I was in so much pain with it, put quite a lot of anaesthetic down the same needle. And that nearly made me jump off the damn table. <laughs> I'm not saying this to scare you, but it was so bearable. Like, don't don't worry about it. In that moment, it was really sore. Once he'd moved on to the second one, the first one was numb again. That was it. It was done. It was so sore, but then it was gone. So, yes, he put that stingy. It was like somebody put an acid in it, but then it numbed it. So that was fine. Second one, breeze after that. Third one, totally breeze as well. Once it was all done, they kind of wait, and I don't know what it does if it decompresses or something like that. It goes beep, beep, you know, and then it comes back in and they get the uh, x ray back over again to make sure that everything's okay, and then they take the needles out, and then that is you done. Once you're done, they put a, I was going to say stickers, they put little plasters on your little wounds I mean they're tiny and um, that's if you're okay with plasters if not you just tell them and then they basically take through the bed that you're gonna be in for the hour afterwards and you roll onto it I have this down to a fine art now because this is my fourth time doing it so roll over once you're over it they've set you up to like the stage that you need to be at and this is where I kind of struggle because I have quite a big bum. So I kind of like arch out the way. So I try and get my bum out a little bit so that I can sort of just relax down like that. So instead of like being up, I'm, I'm kind of curled down. Uh, and then I'm happy. So you get wheeled out. They sort of leave you alone for a wee bit. They check your blood pressure and it's funny because my blood pressure is normally low. This, it was high. <laughs> it was actually like normal. <laughs> so, or above normal. So they leave you alone for a wee bit. You just get to sort of like start to feel a wee bit better. And I realised that like my legs, because they told me like you could get leg numbness before and I'd never got it. So my legs were feeling like cold. Not cold because they were trying to put more blankets on me. I was like, no, I'm not cold because I was shaking like a leaf through the whole thing and they kept on asking me if I was cold. I'm like, no, I'm fine. I'm actually quite warm. But my legs felt cold. Now, when I put them together, like, on my thighs, I was like, no, but they're they're warm. Like, they're, they're normal temperature. They're fine. Uh, my feet felt really cold. But it's the same sensation you get if you've, like, if they're numb. Essentially, they were numb. My I could move my feet. Fine. I could move my legs. I was pulling my knees up a little bit, you know, to get comfy and stuff like that. I could totally move my legs, but there was like no feeling in them like there was a little bit but I was like nope they're dead so an hour passes and they're like right okay because I got a cup of tea and I had some biscuits and stuff like that they did my blood pressure again they said you're going to be good to go whenever um finish your tea finish my tea and they're like right we're going to come and get you up because it's been an hour <laughs> this is where <laughs> the fun started <laughs> so essentially they get you to sit up and swing your feet out and she was saying now I know you've done this before but really hold on to me so that things aren't going to move and do not move until you feel like you can so I was like all right okay then jumped up and I got my feet under me and I was like oh that feels weird that feels different like you know like if you're sitting on your foot and you get to stand up and it's like your ankle joint isn't connected to your foot and you feel like you're going to go over the ankle, that's exactly how I felt. So she, I was like, oh, that feels weird. So she kind of shimmied me over, put me in the chair, and she's like, right, you can try and get dressed. Don't stand up if you can't. If you can't, just let us know, and we'll come through and help you. I, just, I was so glad at this point I didn't wear leggings. I thought, how would I get leggings on? And I managed to get dressed. So I managed to stand myself up. And as long as I was holding on to something or just standing, I was fine. 
I was totally fine. So I managed to get dressed. Everything was cool. I was like, right, okay, I don't know what to do now. Like, I, I physically couldn't lift my bag. My handbag was too heavy. Um, not that I didn't have the strength, but I didn't have the balance. So if I'd lifted it, I'd have had to hold on to something. And I wouldn't I wouldn't have been able to do that. So when they came back in, they're, I was like, can I ask my other half to come and get me? They're like, we can walk out, it's fine. I was like, right, okay, I'll tell them to come to the door then. And I was like, I don't think I can carry my handbag. So one of the nurses had it. She, over her and it had a nurse on this arm and a nurse on this arm. I really wish I'd gotten a photo of this because it was so comical. And they basically walked me out of the building. They even put me into the car. Now my other half has a Ford Ranger and it's like a step up. <laughs> so they pushed me in and I was fine. My legs, when I tell you, were like, it was like the joints of my hips down weren't connected properly. And um, when I took a step, it's like my ankle went, uh, and my knee went, uh, and my hip went, uh. so it was like, I was like exaggerated, <laughs> and like swinging hips side to side, it was so comical, it's like, I wish the other people could have seen it, I wish I could have videoed it, it would have just been so funny. I have never felt that way in my entire life, it was like, it wasn't even like I was walking on the moon, your legs were working, but it was like they were drunk. It was so funny. So I was in the car, that was fine. And I was like, shit, I really hope I don't need to pee before we get home because it's a four hour drive home. Well, I mean, it wasn't really four hours, it was about three and a half. I needed to pee <laughs> around about Bewley. <laughs> and uh, I, well, it wasn't even, it was around about, I don't even know, Dingwall or something like that. Maybe even Evington or something. And, uh, I was like, I don't know what to do. So I started Googling um, for toilets, public toilets, and seeing like if I could see photos of them where they were and stuff like that. Because obviously I can't, I couldn't go into Morrison's or something like that because, well, I'd have to walk all the way into Morrison's. Finally found one in Bewley that was literally at the side of the road. So got there, parked outside, and there was a Harry, Harry Gow's so we could get a sandwich too. Um, so of course, my other half helps me out of the car. That's fine trying to cross the road was a flipping nightmare I thought I was gonna get hit by a car and other and people were like looking at me funny and I thought oh my god this is how it feels to like look different and for people to like stare at you and think what the hell's wrong with her I mean it was funny <laughs> so of course we went over and it was like a toilet block so if you're I mean I'll put a photo of it up here but it is like a toilet block and I was like I really hope that I can get in so we looked and there was a disabled toilet but it was locked, you needed a key. So we were gonna get the key, but then when I peered my head in, I was like, the cubicles aren't actually that far away from the door. So I took the door handle, I walked the door in, opened the door, and I went from the door to the cubicle, and I walked into the cubicle. So I had a hand on something the whole time. Couldn't even wash my hands when I came out because I couldn't get to the sink. <laughs> so I had to use hand sanitizer in the car. <laughs> so I peed anyway, this is ridiculous. I got up and realised when I came out of the cubicle that I couldn't get to the door because the door had been open and uh, it had closed obviously so it was too far away now and I was like how the hell am I going to do this? I'm going to have to like try and make as big a step as I can to get to this flipping door and I totally underestimated how asleep my legs were nearly fell backwards and he's of course on the other side of the door like are you okay i'm like no so he opened the door and i managed to get it and then of course that was me and i went back to the car so obviously across the road to the car and here's now because they did my right side first my right leg was waking up just a little bit faster than my left leg so when i got in the car the first time i used my right leg to bear my weight as i pulled myself with the jesus handle I used the wrong leg trying to get back into the car and I don't know what he was doing but my leg buckled underneath me so my right leg is up on the step There's, the rangers have got these big steps on the side of them and um, even on the best of days I have to use that to use the Jesus handle to get in so I had that in my hand I had my foot in front of me and it just gave way and I couldn't hold on I'd missed the seat and I'm like help me <laughs> he's laughing he's like how i'm like i don't know grab my bum and put me in the seat <laughs> so this was a debacle <laughs> there was people looking at us uh i thought i was gonna fall out and land i was like so i'm so glad i'm numb right now i was numb every so often i was getting sort of wee twinges i could feel that i was bruised but i was so numb 
It's <laughs> like if I fall on my arse out of this car, that's it. <laughs> We're done. <laughs> so back in the car, that was fine. I didn't have to get out of the car to go to Harry Gow's and that was the uh, fab. I'm good to eat a sandwich and stuff like that. I felt 100% fine. There was no, I didn't feel queasy. I didn't feel unwell. Um, I felt really quite drained. I felt quite tired because we'd left at four in the morning to get there for eight o'clock. So I was knackered, which is probably a good thing. Anyway, we got home and by the time we were home, I could sort of walk on my own. Uh, I needed to be holding on to surfaces, but I could sort of walk on my own. So from, I think I was finished and out at nine and then we got home by four o'clock. Yeah, we were home by four because we obviously get held up. Uh, we... I basically just sat on the couch. I had a, I had a snooze because I was so tired and... I, by like nine o'clock at night, was walking to the toilet by myself. My legs still weren't 100% because I was panicking a little bit because I was working the next day. But I wasn't holding on to surfaces anymore. They just felt a little bit uneasy under me. So this will be day four. My muscles in my back are really sore. It's like my muscles are really stiff. So when I do that and stretch them out, it feels amazing. Um, but yeah, they're still a bit sore. Um... I think it's going to take a wee, they said it can take up to five days for like the residual pain and stuff like that. My muscles are basically guarding and I need to loosen them up. So I've been doing a lot of stretches and stuff and I probably overdid it the day after going to work, but never mind. I can feel that my pain is gone, if that makes any sense. Like my back hurts, but my actual pain is pretty much gone. I will keep you updated on how I got on, how long it lasts and stuff like that, how it is next time and stuff. But honestly, if you're if you're somebody who has back pain and you know it's to do with your spine, you it's either slip disc or, you know, um nerve pain or facet pain or anything like that. Speak to your doctor. See if it is something that would help because it might not help. But I was recommended it and it was me that had to push for it and when I got it done, it it literally was like if they're looking for the right thing sometimes it helps so if you do think that it's something that might help you I mean that it can work for hips and stuff like that as well it's it's not just like a spinal thing and it obviously is something that they want to do once they know for sure that that's what you need but yeah obviously if it works it works um so that'll be me they'll check on me in nine months and then with any luck it could take up to two years for the nerves to grow back so we just have to keep our fingers crossed so yeah i think that's pretty much it obviously if you have any questions at all anything that i've forgotten or anything like that just let me know in the comment section down below and i will endeavor to ask them for you and ask them for you answer them for you i'm seeing the physio on the 7th which is in like 10 days or something like that and we're gonna obviously work on improving everything else now that my pain should hopefully be gone and yeah i'll keep you updated obviously if you enjoyed this video i would absolutely love if you would give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and i'll have loads more sort of like vloggy things coming because we're going to florida again this year and i will do more than a travel day <laughs> i swear <laughs> so yeah stay tuned if you want to see that and hopefully i'll see you guys in my next video